Uh, the author of next presentation is Lavina Stan, is an associated professor at uh, Francis Xavier University in Canada. Uh, her main research interests uh, center around uh, the process of democratization, uh, the transition of justice, the problem of religion and politics, and uh, focuses on the problematics of civil society. Uh, you can start. Uh, thank you for the, to the organizers and thank you to the um, translators for their job. Uh, I might add that uh, my presentation is uh, just a fraction of a, lay, uh, of a larger paper that I can make available to anyone uh, who's uh, emailing me. In 2003, David Baker lamented the underappreciated role of non-state actors in transitional justice. Ten years later, his observation still applies to research on Romania, which remains state-centered. My talk maps the groups that have impacted the country's reckoning with the communist past, explains which programs they affected the most, and draws general conclusions about their contribution to transitional justice in post-communist settings. Three categories of groups are relevant for our discussion. The first includes nationwide associations of former victims who support comprehensive transitional justice. The Association of Former Political Prisoners in Romania, created in 1990, gathers political prisoners and deportees. The smaller Association of Former Political Prisoners and Anti-Communist Fighters represents communist-era political prisoners with ties to the interwar fascist Iron Guard who were imprisoned, tortured, or killed by the Securitate. The association of owners of property abusively confiscated by the state, set up in 1999 in Bucharest, includes property owners seeking property restitution or fair compensation. Other groups are present locally in Craiova, Rumniku Vulcea, these are small towns, or Bucharest, the capital. The French Association for Defending Property Rights in Romania and the German Restitution in Romania represent owners living abroad. At the Gheorghe Ursu Foundation, set up by relatives of, um, of an engineer murdered in uh, 1986 in the uh, Bucharest militia dungeons. The Ion Gavrilo Goranu Foundation, named after the leader of the Fagarash anti-communist fighters, uh, also um, an Iron Guard uh, uh, figure. And the uh, uh, Ikar Foundation, which provides medical rehabilitation to victims. Transitional justice has also been advocated by organizations uniting victims of the 1989 revolution, which remain preoccupied with finding the truth about those events, unveiling the involvement of post-communist leaders in the revolution, and securing financial benefits for their members. The best known such group is the Association 21st of December 1989, set up in 1990 in Bucharest. This first category further comprises religious communities that face persecution, property confiscation, and surveillance at the hands of the communists. In the 1950s, for example, many Orthodox clergy and faithful were imprisoned. Afterwards, the church was monitored by the Securitate, which recruited some of its priests as secret agents. And I've written with my husband on this, uh, on this uh, issue. We call them uh, devil's confessors. Uh, there are estimates that in some counties, as much as 95% of all priests were working for the Securitate. In 1948, the state dismantled the Greek Catholic Church, imprisoned its bishops, and transferred its property to the Orthodox Church. The second category includes, includes intellectuals who support lustration, truth-telling, and access to secret files, but generally reject efforts to unveil collaborators from among their members and parties close to them. While small and elitist in view, the Timisoara Society, the Civil Alliance, and the Group for Social Dialogue have proposed some of the most coherent remembrance programs advanced by the Romanian civil society. The third category is inimical to transitional justice, as, and as far as I know, I'm the only one talking about these guys. So please help me. If you know examples from other countries, I would like to hear about them. 
It includes the tenants who occupied confiscated dwellings with um, authorities' permission before and after 1989. Some tenants were poor workers who moved to town to work in new industrial factories, but many others were privileged nomenclatura members renting dwellings from the state at low rents, not reflecting their market value. The Association of Tenants Living in Nationalized Dwellings has branches throughout Romania. The Association of Tenants who acquired ownership through law 112 of 1995 represents tenants who bought the confiscated dwellings in which they live uh, without the approval of the initial owners. Tenants and secret agents were not the only ones to benefit from the communist infringement of other people's rights. Since 2003, the Motherland and Honor Solidarity Foundation protects the interests of former Securitate officers and post-communist intelligence service, um, service agents. Former communist decision makers have been reluctant to create associations because they could face public condemnation as a result. And after 1989, retain much enough political clout to advance their personal interests through the existing political parties. Communist perpetrators have gained a public voice as members of parties' successors to the Communist Party and the Communist Youth League, such as the Social Democrats, the Democrats, and the Greater Romania Party, which were uh, alternatively in government and in opposition. Let me now turn to the second point I want to make today and outline the contribution of civil society to judicial and non-judicial transitional justice programs. The civil society has promoted lustration without being able to convince political elites to implement it. In 1990, the Timisoara Society called for banning communist de uh, decision makers from running in general elections. The society has understood lustration as an accusation-based process. Almost all associations representing victims and intellectuals have shared this view. In 1993, Senator Tico Dumitrescu, leader of the Association of Former Political Prisoners, presented Parliament with a motion on secret agents that amounted to a lustration proposal. The motion had no effect, so Dumitrescu then asked public officials unveiled as former agents to renounce their posts voluntarily. Parliament ultimately stripped that proposal of its lustration stipulations. Inspired by Bulgarian efforts, in 2006, Romanian journalists launched a Clean Voices campaign to identify secret agents in mass media. The civil society then called on spies to unveil their ties to intelligence services and convinced the Chamber of Deputies to organize a public debate on lustration in 2006, which was a big deal in that country. Representatives of 10 groups, including some of the groups I'm, I mentioned before, the Timisoara Society, the Civic Alliance, and the Association of Former Political Prisoners, stated their position in that debate, but Parliament opted for confession-based lustration. Since 1989, civil society actors have called for the prosecution of former prison guards, Securitate officers, and party leaders, and collected information to indict communist criminals. Press campaigns, street protests, and roundtable talks have been used to promote trials. By 2012, the Association of Former Political Prisoners, the USU Foundation, and the Institute for the Investigation of Communist Crimes submitted 27 complaints to military prosecutors against Securitate officers, heads of detention centers, and prison guards. No court trials ensured. Zero. <laughs> Few perpetrators are alive today and the surviving ones are old, so their prosecution is improbable, and we can talk in the debate uh, part about the, the recent indictment of uh, former prison guards on charges of genocide, and what I believe uh, that will happen as a result. The court's reluctance to recognize communist abuses as crimes against humanity, and the civil society's support for a generic trial of communism explain the scarcity of trials against communist perpetrators. Preference for an all-encompassing trial of communism was first voiced in 1990 by the Civil Alliance, which asked for a trial of the leftist ideology of communism. The call, of course, had little legal value since abstract concepts like ideology or political regime cannot be put on trial. 
The preference for the trial of communism as opposed to specific cases has stemmed from the civil society's representatives' lack of legal expertise. Access to secret files was the brainchild of Tico Dumitrescu, who convinced parliament to legislate it by drawing support from the Association of Former Political Prisoners, the Group for Social Dialogue, and other victims group. In 1997, the Senate restrict, um, restricted Dumitrescu's original lustration proposal so that files were made public only if their contents did not endanger national security. The leadership of the file custodian, that is the National Council for the Study of Securitate Archives, was no longer independent from the government, and the archives remained housed with the institutions that produced them and wanted to keep them under lock to cover their links to the former dictatorship and the Securitate. These amendments enraged the civil society groups, which called on deputies to consider Dumitrescu's original draft, as they believed that the amendments made it impossible for the truth about communism ever to be known. While ignored, the petition showed that civil society actors could come together in support of a transitional justice project if they wanted. Undoubtedly, the civil society scored its greatest success in 2006 when it convinced President Trajan Basescu to, to create the Presidential Commission for the Study of the Communist Dictatorship in Romania, the so-called Tismananu Commission. Weeks before Romania's accession to the European Union on 1st of January 2007, Basescu condemned the communist regime in front of parliament and on the basis of the commission's final report, which detailed the mechanisms of repression in communist Romania, the ties between the Securitate and the Communist Party, and the continuity between the Gheorghe Gheorghiu Dej Stalinist regime and um, Nicolae Ceaușescu's uh, Sultanist totalitarian regime. The commission was created in response to the civil society calls to renew the political elite by legislating lustration. Under pressure from victims groups, Basescu declared that he could not support lustration without first condemning the communist regime as criminal and repressive, since collaborators just obeyed an internationally recognized regime and the laws of the time. Only the exposure of the regime's repressive character could lay down the moral ground for a blanket policy like lustration, Basescu uh, claimed. To condemn communism, Basescu needed a scientific report on the crimes written by experts. The Presidential Commission included representatives of the Association of Former Political Prisoners and the Group of Social Dialogue. Frustrated with the judiciary's unwillingness to organize a Nuremberg-type trial, in September 2006, civil society groups organized an opinion tribunal in Cluj-Napoca. This is the first and only instance of such an organization or an initiative that I know of in Eastern Europe. The tribunal included nine former victims, one counselor each for the prosecution and the defense, and 150 audience members who acted as jurors. Charged with genocide and crimes against huma uh, humanity, the communist regime was found guilty of all charges after the opinion tribunal discussed a summary of its human rights abuses. The opinion tribunal had little echo inside and outside Romania and was ignored by the general public, the political elite, and the press. The public was reluctant to support a trial of communism that indirectly implicated the four million ordinary party members, and former victims argued that the post-communist state, that is the legal successor to the communist state that perpetrated the, uh, the crimes, should acknowledge responsibility through its judiciary. But the courts have ignored, uh, ignored these demands, pointing to the statute of limitations applicable to those cases. Victims and intellectual groups challenged the legitimacy of the opinion tribunal, calling instead for a trial, another trial of communism in the courts of law, in the regular courts of law. In 2003, for example, the ICAR Foundation, the one who's uh, um, uh, providing a, um, rehabilitation for former uh, uh, political prisoners, asked the government to acknowledge uh, the communist holocaust, apologize to victims, and admit that the Securitate was a political police. President Iliescu and the Social Democrat government ignored the request. After the 2004 elections, ICAR convinced President Basescu of the power of an official apology addressed to victims 
and the society, the Romanian society at large, and coming from the country's top state dignitary. Basescu agreed to deliver the apology after the commission documented the crimes. But the apology, however, never came being replaced by a condemnation of the uh, communist regime. Since 1989, organizations of initial owners have asked for the return of the property they lost or for fair compensation when restitution in kind was not possible. They have opposed the tenants who rent confiscated dwellings from the state. All these groups have tried to influence public policy through street protests, open letters, and press campaigns. In 2000, the Association of Tenants Living in Nationalized Dwellings convinced Parliament to accept of, as valid the contracts through which tenants bought nationalized dwellings from the state. As such, Law 10 of 2001 prohibited the return of homes bought by tenants in good faith. The Association of Owners of Property Abusively Confiscated by the State warned that all tenants knew that the houses they had had been illegally confiscated. The association also monitors the activity of the property fund set up in 2005 to provide compensation to owners and the cases lodged by Romanian owners, initial owners, uh, with the European Court of Human Rights, which uh, recently reached um, uh, 2000. Yeah, the number. Property restitution also extended to church property, including the, um, the property transferred in 1948 from the Greek Catholics to the Orthodox Church. Since 1989, the two churches have engaged in high-profile public campaigns for restitution in the case of the Greek Catholics or against it in the case of the Orthodox. At the pressure of the Orthodox, in the early 1990s, the government denied the Greek Catholics their right to seek justice through the Romanian courts. In turn, the Greek Catholics approached the European Court of Human Rights, which recognized in two years ago um, the infringement of, um, of their rights and obliged the Romanian state to allow the courts to hear cases of uh, Greek Catholic um, church restitution started in, um, uh, recently. As it commands the loyalty of 86% of the population, the Orthodox Church remains an important civil society actor shaping the politics of the past. In the absence of a museum dedicated to the uh, victims of communism, the Siget Memorial remains Romania's most significant memorialization project. Created in 1993 by the Civic Academy, the memorial includes the museum located in the former Siget prison, a political prison, one of the worst of and the International Center for the Study of Communism in Bucharest, which both seek to revise the country's history falsified by the communist regime. Besides oral history programs, the memorial organizes summer schools for pre-university teachers and students, publishes a scholarly journal, and commemorates a day of memory dedicated to those who suffered in communist prisons. Victims groups have also funded memorials. The Association of Former Political Prisoners erected hundreds of monuments, crosses, and commemorative plague, uh, plagues throughout Romania to mark the site of former political prisons or murders of anti-communist fighters to remember the struggle of anti-communist heroes or to celebrate the people's opposition to the dictatorship. Given the reluctance of post-communist governments to honor victims and condemn perpetrators, these efforts to mark memory sites remain of utmost importance. Let me now make some general observations about the role of civil society in Romanian transitional justice. Some apply to other countries as well. Others are relevant only for Romania. For la lack of time, I will just list these observations without providing full explanations to them. Yeah? First, I think there is a wide diversity of groups interested in transitional justice, and not all of them support reckoning, a fact insufficiently recognized by scholars and practitioners. Actually, when two years ago, almost three years ago, when I started to look into, the, um, into civil society contributions to transitional justice in Eastern Europe, I could find nobody who even uh, you know, hinted to um, anti-transitional justice groups. Inimical groups are formidable opponents. 
when organized as institutional interest groups working within um, the government and having privileged ties to the, to the government, like those gathering intelligence agents. Second, the need to address multiple abusive pasts creates competition within the civil society. The victims, in, in the case of Romania, the victims of the 1989 revolution, those of Ceausescu and those of Gheorghe Gheorghiu's um, Dej uh, regime, have competed more than collaborated with each other. And all of them have competed with the victims of, uh, of the Iron Guard regime, yeah? which is a pity. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's bickering, nobody's collaborating. Their contradictory agendas have delig delegitimized transi transitional justice, instilled memory fatigue in the public, and provided arguments for governments to do as little as possible in coming to terms with the recent past, in the idea that if I cannot satisfy all, I'll don't even try to do anything about it. Third, in Romania, victims' organizations have generally enjoyed strong leadership but face crippling financial difficulties even when anti-communist parties formed the government. Groups created around post-communist leaders could draw on their ex expertise but were disadvantaged by these leaders' old age and health problems acquired in communist uh, prisons. Lack of finances has partly been addressed uh, by enthusiastic volunteer work. Fourth, victims set up uh, civil uh, society groups earlier than perpetrators because perpetrators were represented in the first post-communist governments that blocked uh, reckoning. It was only later when public debates on the need to honor victims and identify perpetrators unfolded and anti-communist parties won elections that civil society actors inimical to transitional justice appeared. The reproduction of communist elites gave perpetrators representation in state structures and obliged victims to organize as part of the civil society. This state perpetrators, non-state victims dichotomy has remained almost unchanged since 1989. Fifth, overall state actors have blocked and civil society actors have supported redress, writ large, yeah, looking at them. Civil society groups have been listened to and their projects have been supported only when parties and governments have anticipated possible electoral gains. These groups were abandoned, ignored, or even silenced when their demands for justice threatened the careers of powerful political gatekeepers or the policy priorities, legitimacy, and popularity of the ruling party. And six, my last thing, civil society groups have promoted mostly non-judicial and often local reckoning processes of rather limited impact. The wavering and self-interested position of the intellectuals and the dishonesty of civil society actors who hid their own former collaboration with the Securitate also explain why the Romanian reckoning has been politicized and delegitimized in the eyes of the public. So my conclusion is that the challenge facing the pro-transitional justice civil society groups in Romania is to find common ground, a common voice, and a common platform to promote various methods, processes, and practices of coming to terms with the past as new generations with no direct experience with the communist regime and its crimes come to the political stage. This implies more concerted action, a redesigned agenda and toolkit, maybe more jurists, in, uh, in the um, uh, civil society, and the political acumen needed to bring the public and the political elite behind the larger decommunization project.